One of the deadliest organisms to humans living today is an organism that you encounter every single day of your life. The latest set of data shows that this organism has killed 437,000 individuals in 2013. And these deaths were not only in one location, they were all over the globe. What is this organism? It's you. Not you specifically, but the species that you belong to. Humans have murdered 437,000 individuals in 2013. But humans are not the deadliest organism to humans. There are other deadlier organisms, one of which is the infamous mosquito, specifically around 30 species that belong to the genus Anopheles. They transmit malaria. Malaria is a horrifying disease that infects around 4% of the world population. In 2015 alone, malaria has killed around 738,000 individuals. Now to be clear here, malaria is not caused by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes only act as a carrier. What is causing malaria are the several species of plasmodium that mosquitoes carry. So you'd have to classify both of them as a deadly organism. Except technically speaking, mosquitoes are deadlier because they transmit other diseases such as yellow fever and dengue fever. But malaria is not the deadliest disease caused by an organism that is plaguing humans today. There are far deadlier diseases out there. This includes HIV and tuberculosis, each of which have caused around 1.1 million human deaths in 2015. The thing is, you could say that tuberculosis and malaria are caused by living organisms. It's a bacteria in the case of tuberculosis, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it's a type of protozoa in the case of malaria, Plasmodium. The same thing might not be able to be said about HIV. HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. And there's a debate regarding whether a virus is considered to be a living organism or not. Why? First of all, it's way smaller than something like Plasmodium or Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it doesn't have a way to metabolize nutrients. It doesn't have a cellular structure. It doesn't have a way to replicate its own RNA and DNA. It has to invade other cells and use their own equipment in order to make these functions happen. But whether you consider viruses to be alive or not, they clearly play an important role in the way other living organisms function. So we are going to include them as a living organism for now. In this particular case, you could say that Mycobacterium tuberculosis and the human immunodeficiency virus, which caused around 1.1 million deaths each in 2015, are in fact the deadliest organisms to humans living today. The good news is all the diseases that I've mentioned so far, malaria, tuberculosis and HIV have in fact been going down in terms of the number of deaths they are causing for humans. Hopefully far in the future we can completely eradicate them from the population. Now so far what we've been discussing is what is the deadliest organism to humans. But you might have noticed we are not the only organisms on the planet. There are other organisms. What is the deadliest organism to all other organisms? There are five officially recognized mass extinction events that have happened throughout history, the latest of which is the one that completely wiped dinosaurs off the face of the planet. But there is another mass extinction event, and it could be happening right now as we speak, and it is being caused by an organism that has completely taken over the planet. What is this organism? It's you. It's your fault. I mean, not you specifically, but the human species overall. There's a term called the natural background extinction rate. It refers to how many species are expected to become extinct each year if humans were not in the picture. It usually refers to the time where humans were not the dominant living organism on the planet. Right now, because of several human activities, whether it is causing habitat loss, introducing invasive species, or even disrupting the food web, humans are in fact causing species to die off at a rate estimated to be a thousand times higher than the natural background extinction rate. Now, depending on our future conservation efforts, we might be able to avoid taking second place as the deadliest organism to all other organisms in all of Earth's history. Even if we actively hunted and made it our mission to wipe out as many species as possible on the planet, it's going to be pretty hard to beat 
the deadliest organism of all time. Of all the mass extinction events, the deadliest one of them all is the Permian-Triassic mass extinction event, which happened around 250 million years ago. It killed off around 96% of all marine species, around 70% of terrestrial vertebrates, and is the only known extinction event to cause mass extinction in insects. It's even been referred to as the Great Dying. There are several theories for why the Great Dying happened and why it caused so many species to die off. The most popular of which is the biggest volcanic eruption in life's history. It happened around where Siberia is today. This volcanic eruption was so big, it completely halted the food web. It released so much dust into the atmosphere that sunlight was blocked. At the same time, it released massive amounts of carbon dioxide and methane, greenhouse gases, which kept heat from escaping from the surface. This made the surface of the Earth hotter than usual. However, it seems that this eruption on its own couldn't have really been the only reason for why many species died off. Now, to be clear here, what I'm about to mention is only a hypothesis. If it proves to be incorrect, then humans are likely to be the deadliest organism to all other organisms of all time. So with that said, what is the deadliest organism if this hypothesis turns out to be true? It is possible that the deadliest organism of all time may have used the conditions created by this volcanic eruption, the most massive volcanic eruption in life's history, to the max, flourishing at an extreme rate. These organisms are methanogenic organisms, and you can tell from the name itself that they release methane as part of their metabolism. The thing is, these methanogenic organisms can't really digest dead biological matter unless they have access to one more thing and that would be nickel. And guess what could have provided a lot of nickel for these methanogenic organisms? That would be the most massive volcanic activity in life's history. The nickel released by this volcanic activity should have given free reign to these methanogenic organisms to consume as much dead biological matter as they can, which by the way, there should have been plenty of which because of this same massive volcanic eruption. Now, as part of their metabolism process, these methanogenic organisms start releasing massive amounts of methane into the atmosphere. And what would that cause? Global warming on an unprecedented scale. This should have made life harsher for organisms living on land and way harsher for organisms living in the ocean. Why is it way harsher for organisms living in the ocean? Because the release of methane by these methanogenic organisms plus the warming caused by such methane release should have acidified the oceans. The acidification of such oceans should have suffocated them. The amount of oxygen should have declined. And guess who likes an environment with almost no oxygen? It's the methanogenic organisms. Now, these methanogenic organisms have even more dead biological matter that they can consume. And what would that mean? Even more methane release. And what would that mean? Even more warming, even more ocean acidification, and even more ocean suffocation. These methanogenic organisms are called methanosarcina, and if they have done what they are hypothesized to have done, it's likely that they are in fact the deadliest organisms to all other organisms in all of Earth's history. What do you think? What is the deadliest organism?